Amy from Chegg Tutors. Today I want to talk to you about the idea of a tragic flaw, which we see in lots of classical literature, but especially in tragedy and also in mythology. Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, wrote The Poetics, a very early tr attempt to talk about what drama is, what poetry is, and the best way that drama can be made. Aristotle says that in a tragedy, the hero has a tragic flaw. He makes an error in judgment that leads to his downfall. Now, there are lots of examples of this, and you can probably even think of examples in your own life. A guy who's a genius, a great guy, a loyal friend, but he, he really doesn't get along with his roommates, or and it leads to him having to leave his apartment, or really great guy, but also kind of an arrogant guy, and maybe it gets him in trouble sometimes. Let's look at a couple examples from tragedies. This one is from Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe, an, uh, a drama that was around the time when Shakespeare was also writing. Faustus's offense can never be pardoned. The serpent that tempted Eve may be saved, but not Faustus. God forbade it indeed, but Faustus hath done it. So Faustus is a guy who makes a deal with Lucifer, makes a deal with the devil, and it doesn't turn out so well for him. He's a really smart guy. He wants to keep reading his books and learning. Now he'll do anything to burn his books because he's made a deal with the devil and he's ruined now. We see in here also kind of the original example of what we might think of as a tragic flaw. Adam and Eve are in paradise in the Garden of Eden. Eve is tempted by the serpent, and they, f they and there's the fall. They live now in a fallen world. That's not a traditional example of a tragic flaw in tragedy itself, but it's kind of a way we can think about the tragic flaw. Here's another example, this time from Hamlet. Now, Hamlet, as we can see in this famous to be or not to be speech, is a very indecisive guy. He puts off and puts off and puts off whether to kill his father's murderer. In the process, Ophelia commits suicide, many other people die, and things don't turn out so well for Hamlet. Hamlet is ambitious, he's sensitive and emotional, but he has this tragic flaw of indecisiveness. The last example I have is not from tragedy, but from mythology. Odysseus of Homer's Odyssey is very clever. He's a great leader, and his men follow him for years, for 10 years at the Battle of Troy, and 10 years afterwards as he's coming back from the battle and enduring many, many hardships. Odysseus arrives at the island of Polyphemus, the Cyclops, that we know pretty well. Now, Polyphemus is watched over by the angry god Poseidon, this god, one of the gods of the sea. And up till that time, Poseidon doesn't really have a problem with Odysseus. He's helping him along to get home, just like he would anyone else. But Odysseus has a clever trick to get off the Cyclops Island and save the life of him and his companions. He tells the Cyclops, I am no man. This is a better pun in Greek, but basically, he tells, when, he, when he tells the Cyclops this, and in particular, when he tells the Cyclops' neighbor, uh, or rather, when the Cyclops tells his, his neighbor that he's being hurt by no man, the neighbor lets him alone and doesn't figure out that Odysseus is there hurting the Cyclops. So this is a wonderful trick that shows Odysseus' cleverness. As he's safe, though, and he's riding away on his boat, he can't help but turn back and shout, My name is No Man. By telling Polyphemus the Cyclops what his name is, he gives Poseidon a chance to know who exactly tricked his son and get really, really mad about it. So we all know that everyone has their good parts and their bad parts. Maybe they're a really great person, but they have a few flaws. In tragedy, when a character has a tragic flaw, it's just like in real life, but amplified.